You should have high suspicion for a cervical spine injury in all trauma patients until proven otherwise. Any missed spinal uh, cervical injury can lead to significant disability. In this video, we will discuss how to clear the cervical spine. I am Mohamed Daz, and this is your knowledge platform about the brain, spine, and beyond. So to clear the cervical spine, you can do this either by clinical examination and radiological imaging. The question is, when you have a suspicion of cervical spine injury, do you need to examine other parts of the spine? The answer is yes. The reason is that there is about 10 to 15% chance of having another spinal injury with a cervical spine injury. Like any clinical examination, you need to obtain history from the patient. This is assuming that the patient is conscious. If the patient is unconscious, then a collateral history from a relative or a bystander would be useful. And then you need to collect some details about the injury and how it happened. If it's a fall, then how many feet or meters uh, height of the fall and how the patient landed on the floor or the ground. If it was a car accident, then what was the speed, what happened exactly, and how the patient got extricated, and there, if there was another passenger, then what happened to them. How the patient was doing at the scene, what's the patient's general condition beforehand. So do they have any pre-existing medical condition, especially things like enclosing spondylitis. Then the clinical examination, which basically would follow this usual trauma guidelines, which whatever whichever ones that you follow either the atls or the european trauma primary survey including a b c d and after the patient is stabilized then you can do a secondary survey you need to remove any color that the patient have and inspect the patient for any wound or burn or direct trauma to the face or the head and check if the patient's neck is cut off or head is fixed in one position or to one side or another. Then you have to palpate the neck and check for any tenderness in the neck or the paraspinal muscle. One more thing that needs to be done is that you have to log roll the patient and look at their back and look for the spine, look for any tenderness or any deformity. And that's something that can be easily missed during the initial examination. After all of that, then you do a full neurological examination. This might be definitely difficult if the patient is unconscious. The tricky part here is, okay, when to image a patient coming with neck pain with a trauma too. To decide whether the patient will require a cervical spine imaging or not, you can follow either the Nexus criteria or the Canadian C-spine. If you know what Nexus stands for, let me know in the comments below. As you can see in this table, the Nexus criteria states that to for a patient to get a cervical spine injuries, you need to look on, into those things which kind of a red alerts that, that, that this patient will require uh, imaging. This could be midline cervical tenderness, altered mental status if the patient had a GCS less than 14 or disorientation to time, place and person or inability to remember three objects at five minutes or if the patient has a focal neurological deficit or if there is an evidence of intoxication. This can be in the form of report by the patient or an observer of intoxication or anything during physical examination such as a patient having an odor of alcohol or slurred speech or ataxia and so on or if the patient behavior is consistent basically with intoxication and finally if the patient has a painful distracting uh, injury those uh, any condition that thought by the clinician that can cause severe pain to distract the patient from the cervical spine injury as mentioned in uh, this criteria, as you can see. There is a simplified mnemonic for this one, which is called NSAID, which is basically the N stands for neurological deficit, the S for spinal tenderness, the A for altered mental status, and I for intoxication, and D for distracting injury. So that's basically to, sim to simplify this difficult, complex table. So if you decided that this patient will require imaging, what kind of imaging that you need to do? X-ray or CT? CT is definitely way better because the sensitivity of the CT for cervical spine injuries is about 98%, uh, but for the X-ray is about 52%. So there is a higher chance that you can miss an injury on a cervical X-ray. And if you have done an X-ray of the cervical spine, how to assess that just quickly, because I will make the next video be about how to read the cervical spine X-ray. But simply, you need to look at the alignment of the spine, look at the bone, if there is any bony fractures evident, Look at the soft tissue, which is the prevertebral uh, tissue, the thickness of that, which might entail if it's increased that there might be injury around it. And also look at the um, cartilage, which is basically the discs and uh, in, 
in between uh, the vertebrae. I'm not going to go into much detail about the x-ray or the CT and the imaging because I will make separate videos for those. But this video is mainly to know how to clear the cervical spine from a history point of view and from a clinical examination point of view and how to decide which patients that would require uh, imaging. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for the next video.